Oh, wait. From Austin, Texas, I'm Brian Brushwood, and I'm joined by you, you Justin just, Robert Young, yeah, you say my and name. you're about to have a great night. Can you try? All right, here. Hold on. Nathan, stop it, and oh. let's just start it again. The one thing with Brian is he also, he he tries to do, he tries to hold the, oh, for as long as possible. On the word Austin or just in general? No, no, no. He just goes, okay. oh, all right, all right, all right. I think I got this right. From Austin, Texas. Oh, <laughs> Cut to him. <laughs> It's going to be a great night. Woo! Thank Good you. God. Thank you. That right there is the uh, the lung capacity of a man who regularly sings show tunes in a gay dive bar. Yep. There mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, those are show tunes lungs, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, 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 everybody, to Great Night. Obviously, Brian is not here, which uh, is, is going to be a fun adventure. But uh, your old pal, Justin Robert Young, joining you with Andrew Heaton. Hello. How you Glad doing, man? Good. Big, big day in the Heaton household. I think I already, I already texted you this, but uh, Wallace has been granted Latvian citizenship. Uh, go on. Yeah. So uh, my my war correspondent buddy Christoph uh, from the Eastern Borders podcast came and stayed with me on his honeymoon briefly. Uh, they were doing a tour. He and his wife were doing a tour of America, so they stayed at my place in what Austin, Texas. What else did they hit in America? That they, they really want. Oh, uh, they went to New York. I've heard of it, and I think they made a beeline to Texas. And they stayed with me, and they fell in love with Wallace, and they were going to send me some kind of gift, but they ended up uh, talking to, like, their vice president, and they got Wallace citizenship. So they're going to mail me the uh, certificate here shortly. So you do not have no, citizenship. No, I don't have any citizenship. Nobody wants me. I, I barely have American citizenship, and my dog is now a dual national. So, wait, hold on. How... Well, I guess, yeah, you have birthright citizenship here in America, yeah. right? It's so, real hard to take that away from me. Exactly. Try as you might, Attorney General of Oklahoma. <laughs> but Latvian citizenship, did they have citizenship for dogs? Or no. is this is this just like a little a little a little silly a little silly I'm thing? I'm gonna say this is mostly silly. I don't think my dog gets to vote. Maybe. I already checked on like, do you have socialized Social healthcare I was for dogs? Say, yeah. Like, if my dog gets cancer, can I fly to Latvia? No, they don't have socialized healthcare for dogs. So I think that this is, in effect, a fun thing. Do me a but favor, I'm gonna put it Nathan. On the can you look up the most popular dogs in Latvia and and look up what their chief export is? On we it. need to know a lot. Uh, Wallace, who's Wallace, is sitting on the floor here. Mm. Uh, uh, we got we got to let him know. What what he's what he's in for his new home country, now that he is he's got a he's got a a, a, a think, big bold I future. Think Amber is their chief export, if I'm not mistaken. Or not maybe not their chief ones. What they're known for? They're known for Amber. They're known for Amber. The Baltics are known for Amber, and I feel like maybe honey. But that might just be that there was a lot of honey around when I was there. I don't know. And how long uh, were you there? Like so, a week. I, I technically I became an ambassador for a smaller hmm. country. That kind of doesn't exist. So I, I was I was there long enough to make contacts and stuff. All right, what do we what do we got here? So Latvia exports mainly wood, uh, machinery, as well as steel, textile, and a good chunk of agriculture. The most popular dog breed, uh, we've got a top seven by the Baltic News Network. We have got do, 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 uh, Yorkshire Terrier, German Shepherd, Jack Russell Terrier, a Spitz, a Chihuahua, uh, Papillion, and Labradors. What the hell is Wallace? He's a Latvian flute count, <laughs> which is a breed I made up. He's uh, he's like eight different things. He's uh, mostly boxer, pit bull, German pointer. But he's, so that, none of those I heard, which no. means he's a stud out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wallace is. Wallace like a, walks down the street. Everybody's turning heads. Everybody's like, "What? What is that thing? We Who's that Latvian him, pup?" Put him. Next step is to get him in Parliament, which I think is also doable. <laughs> I think that this is achievable. Wallace for Parliament. Wallace for Parliament. Yeah. 
Do you also get the Baltics and the Balkans mixed up in your head? Not until I did it once while I was over there, and then I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. They're very, they're very. Everyone, everyone east of Germany is emphatically not from Eastern Eastern Europe, according to them. So, yes. like anybody you meet from anywhere, they're like Eastern Europe starts whatever's directly east of us. Those fuckheads are Eastern Europe. Yeah. We're of course Central Europe, and this goes all the way to the Ural Mountains. And then the the Baltics are like very keen on. They're like they're 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 not Eastern European. They're either Baltic or they're sometimes they'll say that they're Scandinavian. Like the Estonians kind of view themselves as like, well, we're we think about we're it. We're basically Finnish. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of how they look at it. Scandinavian ish. Scandinavian ish, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're but but they're not Eastern European. They're very they're very clear on that. And the the Balkans, they'll you'll just get confused. The Bal yeah, when we were down there uh, a couple months ago. They, uh, uh, boy, do they not like each other and they don't make any bones about that. The no. Balkans. No, they've, they've been, they've been sorting through some stuff for a couple thousand <laughs> years. They're working through it. It was funny because, uh, uh, the Olympics are on. And so people were pointing out that, especially in basketball, the Balkan, what the former Yugoslavia, if you put all those countries together, they might have a team that could rival that the might United be the States. Only way for them to come back together. Exactly. And it's like, you know how much they hate each other when they love basketball <laughs> and they wouldn't even get the fuck together for that. They were like, like, no, 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 no. Not even if we could book Luka Doncic and the Joker on the same team. No, still fuck all of you guys forever. They're that you're getting into some like truly hardcore old world bullshit when you go that far oh god yeah. like, like as you know i've spent a lot of time in scotland and like you go to like glasgow and there's still massive protestant versus catholic things going on and i'll talk to people and i'm like do you believe in god and they're like no it's, it's horseshite and you're like okay do you like those people no they're protestant yeah and you're like <laughs> what and they're like well they're protestant flavored atheists we are catholic flavored atheists and i'm like what way to go Way to keep your ancient bigotries going when you don't even believe the underlying premise. Do you think they still believe the premises over there. Do you think that it's better or worse that we don't have that in America? Because we don't. better. We, I mean, because you know as somebody yeah. who has traveled around there a lot, like, we there have, like, is high school rivalries and, like, like basically political parties. But we don't, we don't have that same deep, But for you like, to get into a fight that would happen from, like, a resting position in, like, the Balkans or in Europe or something like that. Like, you would have to be in the middle of an SEC championship game where you're saying something really, really mean to somebody else for you to get in the same level of fight. Like, we, we don't – you can cross between state lines. You can go to your rival college and go see a game. Right. Like, there's, there's not that same level of just resting passion. Yes, I, I think you're right about that. And, like, that's why they need soccer. Because if they don't have soccer, like, World War III breaks they out They do tomorrow. need sublimated. They need they, sublimated they violence. They need to have yeah. it. And, like, whereas, like, again, we've got, like, like I'm not a big sportsman. Yeah. But, like, sports seems to be a very healthy expression of that for most people. Where yes. you, you can go out and be like, you know, we, we slugged it against the 49ers, but, God, their mascot was brave or whatever the fuck people talk that's about. That's a right? normal sports you, conversation. You could, you could go to the Coming up next on First Take. <laughs> Hey, like, hey, like, yeah, we just wanted to say that your wind back did a great job there, El Camino. Or I, I don't know. Whatever the... just love Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> their sportsmanship was superb, and their mascot was something that should be revered. Uh, I bet that's an amazing impression of it whoever is, that it was. It is. No, for everybody else who yeah. uh, has culture, they got it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, I think. The, you know, this is a thing that's happened recently with uh, England. You know, England invented soccer. Have you yeah. heard this? Yeah. If they, if they, well, that sounds like the kind of thing that like a bunch of countries claim. But I'm, I'm assuming England claims that. Well, they claim it. And anytime there is an international competition, specifically either the Euros, where all the European teams play, or the World Cup, where everybody in the world plays, whenever England is close, they say, it's coming home. But it, like my father, never does. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It just, it just, it always eludes them. <laughs> it's a, but that, I feel like, is the kind of sublimated mm -hmm. war that 
fits the rest of uh, that, that makes the world it's, healthier. It's how- Nobody needs England doesn't need to win. It's funnier and better for everybody else if they always get close and then lose. Mm-hmm. Really, the only thing that the rest of the world needs to worry about is who gets to beat England. That so when I'm in Scotland, there's two football teams or so- soccer teams. There's England and not England. Like Scotland's awesome, but like they're like, oh good, we're rooting for. Kosovo. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and then like you'll see all these Scots were like looking up like glory, glory, Kosovo. Like trying to like work their way through it because they really want to beat England that bad. Uh I would love it if you got really unironically into just like one either season or a tournament of of something. Like yeah. you like you did proper like research. Uh, 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 committed to going to a game. I feel like I've been like I've that. been doing baby steps, right? Because I, I went to a soccer game here in Austin. I had a fun time, and I can I can understand you what's did happening. Austin uh, Austin FC. I, I did right? Austin FC, and then and then uh, we we did the Super Bowl, and it was the first time I've ever like fully understood the rules while it was happening. You have, yeah, you watched it the was, Super Bowl was, at my house. Yeah, yeah, it was an enjoyable experience. That was a bizarre experience on a couple different levels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one because th- <laughs> our friends. Darren and Eva, uh, who are also not football fans at all, but Eva is a huge Swifty Mm -hmm. and was very invested in the Kansas City Chiefs because Taylor Swift is dating their tight end. And I was was prodding that fire. I was like, so if the Chiefs lose, does Taylor Swift have to go home with the other quarterback? (laughs) I'm just trying to raise the stakes of that. But that that made it all fun. But they were by far the most into the game. Mm -hmm. The only people who actually gave a shit about football were me and Jen Briney and Joe. Eva was like getting out of her seat and like nervous pacing through the kitchen. She was so worried about the romantic implications on Taylor Swift's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think his... There was the, the question of whether or not she would get, like, engaged. Like, is she that narrative-driven that the time to get engaged would be when her boyfriend wins the Super Bowl? Like, is that is that too much of an opportunity to pass by? I could totally see that. I, I think Taylor Swift is one of the preeminent media geniuses of our time, so I could totally see that. Absolutely. But I would—all right, so let's, let's, let's pitch— is there anything that you that you've ever been curious to be like, ah, eh, this might be there's maybe something adjacent to it, or there's something about the culture of that sport that you're like, oh, I want to pay attention. Okay, so I like I like that rugby starts and stops when it says it does. That to me feels very honest. I've always disliked that about American football. Yeah. Where they're like, we've got eight minutes left, but really it's four and a half hours. And we're going to stop and start every 30 seconds. No, yeah. thank you. Rugby, they're just like, nope, we're going to start it here. Then there's a break in the middle, and then everybody goes home. Like, you can, like, you know when you're leaving 8 p.m. Soccer's I like, that like bit. Soccer's like that, too, but they do the stoppage time. Does rugby do the stoppage time? I, th- I think they're... I don't know they're, why they're, I'm asking you. I immediately I regret think it. there's stoppage in it, but it's like you get X amount, and it's all factored into the overall schedule. So unless something goes wrong, it's just going to take X amount of time, and you don't really have to think yeah, about that. Yeah, but that's that. what soccer is, too. Anyway, okay. again. Right. So yeah, I, like, yeah. I like that. Somebody, bit. rugby, rugby people in the chat. Let me know rugby uh, things. Go maybe ahead. I could get a, uh, maybe like I that, get because that, the... that is the benefit of soccer. Soccer is with plus or minus five minutes, okay. at, uh, like at the end. It is what it says. It is a running clock. Yeah, maybe. But that, I, like I tried to get into that, and it just seems so repetitive. It's like ah, oh, now the ball's on the other side of the field. Ooh, yeah. Like it's hard. It's hard for me to root for it that much. I feel like baseball, which I can follow. I kind of like baseball if you're physically there because it's like fishing. Like, it's very meditative. You can just sit there and you can zone the fuck out for five minutes. And then you hear a crack and you look over and go, oh, we're eight ahead. And, like, you're right back the, in. The most fun I had uh, 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 I, I, I had as a baseball fan came in my healthiest male friendship. Uh, wait, hold on. We have here. Rugby does not stop for minor things or injuries. Typically, only natural breaks. Okay, so that is Great. a hard clock Wait, so no matter what. if you what. get fucked up, they just, like, haul you off the field, but there's no incentive for you to, like, pretend? Yeah. I, okay, rugby sounding the most honest to me of any competitive sport here. Uh, so baseball is exactly that. Really, like, I got into one season when I was in college, and I forget whether it was, like, over a summer or... Yeah, I guess it had to be because it was baseball. And me and another friend of mine... Would just watch every Yankees game. He was an actual Yankees fan. I was bored. And uh, <laughs> it was mostly just us talking about our feelings. But baseball mm-hmm. was, it is a perfect sport yeah. for like 
just breaking up the awkward moments of a conversation. So it's never that long. Right. You're just like, oh, so what about uh, Agnes? Yeah, oh, we you're, don't, right. We don't. you're right. It's like a campfire. Yeah. Like you can stare at a campfire for like 30 minutes and be like, hey, did you get that thing looked at? You were going to go to the doctor for it? And then it's, it's like, again, 20 minute break. Not weird. Yeah, it's like but, a campfire. But it's like with baseball, there's something where it's like, 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 oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I never talked to her again. Beat, beat, beat. Ice pitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, something is happening. Something. And then every once in a while, you're in the middle of, like, like I don't know. He's a fixed rate mortgage. Good. Oh, home run. <laughs> uh, you're making a, a solid case so for baseball. So I would say you, baseball would be good, but... And I, and I actually know all you the rules need, to baseball. Like, I don't, it doesn't have to be explained to me. You would need to have somebody else. You would, you would not be able to do it by yourself. You know who's really into baseball? Who? George F. Will. Oh, <laughs> he <laughs> maybe, is. You know, maybe, Famous baseball columnist, yeah, yeah. George Will. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'll hit him up. Um, uh, what, okay, like curling's the I one. I heard a story once yeah. that he got, because uh, uh, for those of you who don't know George Will on <laughs> first reference like Andrew Heaton does, uh, George Will is a famous baseball columnist and conservative columnist for the Washington Post. And uh, in general, sports writers tend to be on on the more liberal side because they're journalists and journalists tend to go to liberal arts schools that uh, have more liberal people in them. Uh, and so during spring training, which often happens in Florida, Tampa Bay, Florida, there was a strip club where somebody noticed that George Will was at the strip club, and so they paid the DJ to shout out George Will, and he just <laughs> got up and left. Uh, well, maybe that'll be the other thing I do with George Will. Is titty that bars. Is yeah. yeah, titty clubs. Um, okay, wait, curling's the one where you're, you're, you've got a broom and you're trying to taunt a Roomba. Okay. Right? Hey, number Have one, I got that right? curling does not count for you. Because curling is essentially bowling. Like, it is just a, a recreational thing. It, it, during the Olympics, is a big event. But by that, yeah, bowling could be a, uh, an event in the Olympics. And, okay, and it would so, be the so, wait, same so curling is kind of like more athletic version of bocce ball. Like, it's kind of like, a, like an easygoing lawn sport type thing. Curling is something that, while does require skill and a degree of athleticism, if, if, if at least limberness of some degree, you often hear stories during the Winter Olympics of, like, this team started playing yesterday <laughs> and then made the Olympics. See, that sounds cool. I think it'd be a really neat turn if after my dog became a Latvian citizen, I became like a silver medalist at the Olympics. And if you became a Latvian curler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll hit him up. All right. Uh, 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 one more. One more. Any any other sport. A sport that you know people watch. Okay, we got football, rugby, soccer, Baseball. Mm -hmm. Does tennis count? We're going in order of popularity in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, does tennis count? Uh, like, sure. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Makes, the, but but that but, but again, what 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 I would really love is for you to be you to get into kind of the online culture. Hmm. So here's what I would love: Bryce at at some point, I don't, God knows why, got really into college football. Just decided he wanted to get into college football. Really? Huh. Went picked a college at random the University of Oregon, uh, and then just made it his business to go watch college football games, found bars where people were there, found a little community, found a little online, uh, 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 you know, back and forth. He Now all of a sudden he's on Twitter. He's got a reason to send memes. He's laughing and joking with a bunch of other people. And, and he found this kind of like nerd, post-ironic, a uh, uh, community in, in a world that is devoid of natural communities. Mm. He found a yeah. community online for the, for the record. I would love to be into sports. It seems like a great way to connect with people. And there's a kind of like collective euphoria that other people can get into that. I, I have a very difficult time finding activities in that seems like a wonderful part of human experience. So while I don't like sports, I wish I did to be clear on that. The, the part that I have, the, the, the big mental hindrance I have is one, I tend to find it very boring. And two, it's hard for me to root for those collective uh, entities because like, like university of Oregon, for example, I would immediately be like, does it, did they actually like go to the classes? And they're like, well, no, they got, they got drafted 
to, to do the football team at Oregon. That's the only reason they came to Oregon. They actually have interns that go to their classes for them, and then they, like, take a test that they, like, n basically no. Like, they're kind of there, but so I'm like, ah, like, I, I guess they're your fellow students. But like, when you get into the professional leagues where it's just drafting and stuff, yeah. it's like, I, I, I know that everybody here is mercenary about it, so I don't know what I'm rooting. With, with, with tennis, it's at least a person. Like, you know who the person is. A singular person. Yeah. Although, I've or, always or, found or like, that like weird. Se Seven Nations does make sense to me. In, like, in, in Britain, when uh, like the, the, all the old Celtic countries will play football, yeah. will play soccer, but like, they are actually from there. So like, it's like actual Scottish people versus... Uh, you know, people from so then the Brittany Olympic stuff. Olympics that one makes sense to me. Yes. That one makes sense to me because it is sublimated word for you are rooting for a collective entity. That makes sense. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I found out that the Olympics or FIBA, the uh, uh, International Basketball Authority, is trying to rig three on three basketball against the United States. So they have five-on-five five regular basketball for which the United States used to never send professional players. They were like, only our amateur players can go play in the Olympics. But then at some point, I don't know, somebody stepped on America's toe and we're like, fuck it, all the best pros. And it was called the Dream Team. It was just like a heat ray of 92 Barcelona. All the best basketball players of all time go humiliate the world to great acclaim. Everybody loves it. They people are stepping out on the on the court, losing by 90, and they're like, <laughs> Can I get an autograph? Like just they, one of the strangest things that's ever happened in the history of, okay, of, that of the world. That sounds great. I want to do that. Well, that's happening now. Okay, I should watch that. I, so watch, I should... watched some of the volleyball, women's volleyball competition the other day. Yeah, because we have a rooting interest because Jen won't shut up about it. Yeah, she won't shut up about wrong. it. Yeah. But also, I was just at a bar and it was on the TV, and I was like, "Well, this seems cool." And like, I was watching American... it on my quad, and yeah. you put it. And I'm like, "Like, oh, now we're gonna have a fun conversation with Jen." No, she didn't even fucking respond. Yeah, in right. our group chat. Yeah, in our group chat. Mm. I thought, but yeah, all right. So maybe, maybe for uh, 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 Olympic uh, basketball, that's something where you would be part of the mainstream yeah, conversation. Okay, that makes sense. You could go to another sporting person you could go to somebody who pays attention to sports and just say like like man jason tatum off the bench huh i like this and i think that like once every four years wait is it once every two years or every four, four years once, once every four years yeah. is about right for me when it comes to sports like i think I well, can no, you that. could do hockey ah. every every two years you could do hockey and basketball okay all right deal so every two years you would know something you could spend the rest of the time just It'd be so amazing if you randomly were just like, you would watch like the NBA finals and have no rooting interest. And it's like, I'm just scouting for the Olympic team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. All right. I got a plan. All right. There we go. Heaton's uh, sporting life. Folks, you can get that and more at patreon.com slash great night. So obviously we don't have any Brian here tonight, but I'm going to go to Vegas, allegedly. Probably on Thursday, where Brian is, I'm going to try to corral that son of a bitch to do a podcast there. And mm. it's going to be a fun time. Either that or I'll do another podcast and then we'll see if we can get a bonus podcast. Now that I think about it, trying to chase down Brian in Las Vegas seems like a, a real fruitless thing. However, you always get a bonus podcast each and every week. If you head on over to Great Night, uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash great night. Thank you to everybody. Who supports this very show? Uh, Mr. Nathaniel, do we have a game? Yes, we do, gentlemen. And tonight, you will be competing for a prize I think y'all will enjoy greatly. This was found a few years ago by a friend, and I've kept it just for this sort of occasion. In fact, this is an original set of Kennedy playing cards used, what I believe, during his campaign run. Huh. That is for real. He okay. actually showed them to me before, cool. All right. which means they had to be made at some point between 1960 and 1963. Yeah, because probably not made after uh, November 23rd. They are not. 22nd. They are not solemn. Yeah, <laughs> they are fun. Oh. Like everybody's voting for Jack, like that level <laughs> of uh, 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 Kennedy nostalgia. So, tonight's game is called Headline Hunters uh, with the Diamond Club community, which you can find at bit.ly slash NA Discord. Uh, we have compiled four interesting stories we found this week, and I have removed part of the headline. Your job this evening is to find out what the actual headline was. 
For your first headline, blank Power Ranger actor wanted an Idaho parking dispute battery case. Your options are red, white, green, and pink. Say that uh, again slower. Sure thing. Blank Power Ranger actor wanted an Idaho parking dispute battery case. You have the options of the red Power Ranger, the white Power Ranger, the green Power Ranger, and the pink Power Ranger. Okay. Were you a Power Rangers kid? No, no. This is a great, great example of schismogenesis. May I explain? No, you know what? I don't have time for it. My brother was into it, yeah. and he was younger than me, so I was like, that's stupid little kid stuff. I think otherwise I would have been. Yeah. I was like just on the cusp of like... So what was your your Teenage Mutant inter- Ninja Turtles. T- Ninja Turtles, Yeah, I had, right? I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then Adam, my brother, was into Power Rangers. I did go to a Power Rangers, like arena event with him and my parents like they had like a like, live like a show touring yeah live where, show? where they you know came out and like like dance yeah. fought and everything it was pretty cool it was pretty cool but it i'll tell you this much that red power ranger seemed like a loose fucking cannon so All i'm right. gonna go with red nathan i think he beat the shit out of somebody with a tire iron over a battery case or whatever you said in a denny's parking <laughs> lot by, by the way in in headlines the comma is supposed to be red as an and oh I know this co- this headline was horribly written. Like I, I'm reading this verbatim. It genuinely was. No, a- no, no. I yeah. I, I, but that is uh, never mind. All right. Uh, 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 give me the options again. Your options are the red Power Ranger, the white Power Ranger, the green Power Ranger, or the pink Power Ranger. I'm going to say the white Power Ranger. Any particular reasons that sentence came into being? Sorry. Uh, okay, white Power Ranger. All right, gentlemen, the actual headline is Green Power Ranger Damn actor it. wanted an Idaho parking dispute battery case. Hector David Rivera is accused of assaulting a man who uses a walker in a dispute over a parking spot for people with disabilities in Nampa, Idaho. Wait a minute. Didn't the Green Power Ranger become the White Power Ranger? Chat? <laughs> Were you Justin this? can yeah. argue this oh, case. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. If you agree that Justin can argue this case, I'll give the point. Oh, We've- this is a different cast. Different guy. Uh, in the original, in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, there was the Green Power Ranger was kind of like the bad boy, like the rest of them were like the OG. And right, then, like, the, the green one like showed up kind of late, and they were like, like "You can, you can be in her." Yeah, and then there was yeah. like a head in a jar. that was an alien. He was there the whole time. Okay, Zard- but he lived Zardon, in the base. Zardoz, yeah, 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 yeah. Zardoz, okay. Zardoz, the other. No, one. I, I remember the green one. He was yeah. like the long haired guy with a guitar. But then it was deal. a big like cliffhanger. He like dies. Or sacrificed himself or something. The canonical Jesus bit. Mm -hmm. But then he came back Gandalf style in white. Oh. And so he was the white Power Ranger. Okay. And he had shoulder pads. Okay. Oh, right. I do. And it was like gold outline on him. It was like white and gold. Exactly. I do vaguely remember all of this. But this apparently is um, another cast. They rebooted. Uh, they, they 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 rebooted the show many many times. Really, since since the initial cast, they have. I'm just... kind of sad to hear that because I I apparently I liked it more than I thought I did. I liked that it would just cut to random, clearly like like uh, public access level. Uh, oh yeah, same town every time. You could never quite tell. It kind of looked like Mister Rogers' Neighborhood, only larger. And they just like knock stuff over. And then they'd go back and like, but they'd all be like really gesticulative. Like they'd move their heads a lot because it was clearly just brought over from Japan. They didn't even bother doing anything with it. They yeah. just, you know, piped in American voices. Uh, wait, hold up. So I've got follow ups on the story, Nathan. Sure thing. The white Power Ranger, no, the green Power Ranger is the guy that did this. Correct. And he beat a, he beat a disabled man up over a disabled parking spot. So is he himself disabled or is he just that balls out that like he went to the Denny's and was like, get the fuck out of the old park, uh, the parking spot, old man. And then like, like, talk him away and put it in his Bronco. Like, what happened? So, pulling up the article now, but it is more akin to the Denny's. Do, 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 uh, Idaho mis- uh, issued a misdemeanor. Do, 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 do. Uh, a truck li- linked to a man identified as Hector was in a parking spot for people with disabilities at District 208 Shopping Center in Napa on Friday. When a man confronted him, city police spokesman uh, said the victim, a man in his 60s, used a walker, took pictures of the license plate of the pickup truck. Uh, in the disability spot video shows a man push the victim uh, to the asphalt and then stand over the victim and utter, quote, harsh words. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
Mm, how the mighty have fallen. You know, the actress that played Kess on Star Trek Voyager went off the deep end at one point. Really? Yeah. An actress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely voice. Incredible voice. I'm like, but yeah, like, like kind of just, I, I don't remember all the details, but it was a sordid, sordid landing for yeah. her. Yeah. Apparently the original actor who uh, played the green, then white Power Ranger uh, committed suicide. So there's a cursed Power Ranger now? There's a cursed Power Like, whenever Power they do Ranger. it, they'll be like, don't play the, the green, green one, Power- it's cursed. I know, yeah. <laughs> wow, oh, okay. Lord. The Hamlet of like Power some, Rangers. Some old, yeah, some old Broadway legend. <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't play the green Power Ranger, son. You'll never yeah. forgive yourself. Or like, if you played Jesus, wasn't that a thing for a while? Like, anybody that played Jesus that ended their career? I remember that being a thing when, uh, you know that, that sh- uh, what was it called? The Crucifixion? Was that it? Or the re- the one the one that Mel Brooks did like in two thousand and three, where it was about Jesus. Mel Brooks or no, Mel wait, Gibson? Hold on, Mel Gibson. Wait, <laughs> the Mel Passion Gibson? of the Christ. That's it. The Passion of the Christ. I That's was like, it. what fucking but Mel it's about Brooks? The crucifixion. What Mel Brooks movie? <laughs> yeah, I oftentimes can view these two very similar men, Mel Brooks and Mel Gibson. Uh, by the way, I saw that. How with- did Mel Brooks <laughs> not do a parody of the Passion of the Christ? <laughs> I I guess it's kind of history of the world part one. I uh, I went to um, I went to see that film with my friend McGee, and as the as the lights are are dimming, he just loudly goes, "Hey, what's this about?" <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But as I recall, a lot of the chatter at the time was whoever like don't play Jesus. If you play Jesus, like your career's over. Because uh, it's I, I I don't I don't I guess you get typecast I I guess you can either, do either you films. do a bad job and nobody cares and they don't want to yeah. touch G- the bad Jesus guy or you do good and now you're Jesus for the rest of your career. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, and and there's not a lot of old Jesus films, so you age out of that real quick. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard to get the abs. Yeah. You got to really watch the diet for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man, tougher and tougher being in. Did Hollywood. you remember that movie, Passion of the Christ? Do you remember the time where he invents chairs? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the little wink to the audience. Yeah, that like <laughs> like it'll never catch on, and he's like, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do. I forgot about that. Yeah, and they're like the devil's a bald lady with a snake. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it was Tilda Swinson. Was she? I think so. I, I want to. I think, but it was kind of like like an androgynous devil character. I gotta and- watch more. I gotta watch like that run of Mel Gibson right before he went crazy and started screaming the N word to yeah. his uh, to his girlfriend. Did he come back? I feel like he did some films yeah. after that. Like he did some stuff with John Lithgow and stuff. He did a movie that was nominated for an Oscar, I think. Really? Like Hacksaw Ridge or something like that. Hmm. It had the Spider Man, one of the Spider Men in it, Andrew Garfield. Huh. It was like uh, apparently it was like the story of a World War II hero who was a pacifist. So he wouldn't fight, but he was apparently an extraordinarily courageous medic. Oh, okay. Um, nice. But I believe he, uh, uh, I believe he directed that, despite screaming <laughs> the N word and I, many things about Jews. I was about to say I thought the Jewish many, thing. Many. I don't remember the N word being a part of it. Oh but no, the, yeah. I, go, I remember the Jewish thing. Being go a part back of it. to those transcripts, boy. Does that guy know dialogue? <laughs> and, and he, I think he called the police lady sugar tits he did and i i was like well maybe that's her last name but then i looked it up no it wasn't was her last not. name yeah it was no. it was not it was it's not appropriate a, she's not latvian no yeah. it was yeah sugar yeah. tits very yeah. common surname in latvia yeah. sugar teats <laughs> all right next question yeah uh woman calls police after mistaking realistic blank for blank your options are whale mural for beached animal sex doll for body skeleton for corpse and sea mine beach ball for live munition can you do the, the headline again? Sure thing. Woman calls police after mistaking realistic blank for blank. And can you give us the options again? Yep. Whale mural for beached animal. Sex doll for body. Skeleton for corpse. Sea mine beach ball for live munition. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and take sex doll yeah. for body. Like, Because that seems like the, the slam dunk headline. You beat me to it, but I agree. I think that's going to be And it. also, uh, I think we have both stayed here on property uh there is just something to the human pattern recognizing brain that when you see something that looks like a human shape for a split second you believe it and i know we both know this because there is a full suit of Mm. armor in this so we're not talking about brian sextal we're We're not talking talking about about brian sextal okay got it just the full suit of armor that when you first walk out of that room whichever room you're staying in 
you believe you're going to die. Yeah. For yeah. like a split second before your pattern recognizing brain is like, nope, it's the suit of armor I saw a million times the day before. There's a split second that makes you believe you are going to die. S something that I wanted to do, I, I, I really looked into this seriously back when I was in college. So the, the president of my university's wife, Molly Shy Boren, her big thing was she m maintained and, and frequently updated the gardens on the university campus. Like all the time she was rearranging the gardens. So it's not just like perennials that are getting swapped out, but they're just constantly upgrading, changing the gardens. So what I wanted to do in winter was I, I looked into buying an actual skeleton, like one for like medical supplies, and then just burying it in the garden and just... Seeing what happens. what happens. What happens when you yeah. find a skeleton in the garden? Turns out they're very expensive, at least from the perspective of a sophomore in college. Yeah. And so I didn't end up doing it. But I think it would have been a fun week. Uh, we're going to take, uh, well, here, let's get the answer. I'll, and then I'll go we... with skeleton. I think he's got it, but he beat me to it. So I'm going to go with skeleton just in case he's wrong. Uh, the answer is, in fact, a sex doll for Bobby. Should have jumped uh, in. The article, which I will throw on screen. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry, just a moment. Uh, lists out. To someone walking on the beach. Damn, uh, I would okay, think yeah. it's a human. Fair, yeah. fair. Yep. By yep. the way, that sex doll's got cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could, you know, I can see that. It's like, got a, it's got a, got a, that, got a donk. That lady, that lady did the right thing. Plus, you don't want to mess with a crime scene, so yeah. you, you shouldn't get too close to it. To like, like if if I saw that disembodied female figure, I wouldn't. My my first instinct would not be I should flip this over with a stick to see if it's a sex doll or a headless woman. That would not. So I think she did the right thing. Call the police. Let them flip it over with a stick. Yeah, I would say look at the donk on that corpse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick, before we go to the next uh, question here, Nathan, we uh, we do have a sad update uh we need uh, uh mm. from you our our latest word on our our we we, we put together a, a, an investment group yeah. to invest in some art a nine foot tall jar jar binks uh uh you were our you were our go-between nate uh uh, uh how uh, what, what's the you status you were our gungan ligament yeah <laughs> Un you so were to take us through <laughs> the planet's core and uh, uh, bring us to heaven. Where are we? Uh, gentlemen, unfortunately, as of yesterday, the seven foot tall Yusa Jar Jar Binks is no longer on Facebook and has officially ghosted us. Wow. Gentlemen, you have missed your opportunity. They never responded. No, never once. Mm. They actually dropped the price to like 150 above what we offered and then took the listing down. Wait, 150 above what we offer. So, like, so the, like, like, not, not at our level, but only 150 dollars. Yeah, but and they never came back to us. To they be never like, came Let's, back. Hey, 150 more, and it's could yours. Have negotiated. We, you could have talked us into this. We formed a group. Are you kidding? We had an investment group. We have an investment group. That's like when when Brian or Justin text the other two members of our troika. It is the Jar Jar Investment Group <laughs> officially at our <laughs> I iPhone. Changed, I changed like the name. We have a lot of emotional investment in this. We would have done it. I changed the name of our group chat <laughs> to Jar Jar Investment Group, which is a gigantic close up face of Jar Jar. <laughs> And that is what it will stay yeah. until we procure a nine foot tall Jar Jar Binks <laughs> that we can own evenly. <laughs> but yes, that is your update. Unfortunately, Jar Jar is gone. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Next headline. French pole vaulters blank costs him Olympic Oh, by medal. the way, if anyone has Jar Jars that you find loose <laughs> in the greater central Texas area that we could dispatch Nate to go pick up. You know what would be kind of cool? Then let us know. So when, when I was in, I was doing uh, stand-up in Taipei a few years ago, and one of the big draws that I did out there is in, in Taiwan, they used to require every single town in Taiwan to have a statue of uh, Chiang Kai-shek. Yeah, uh, the, the longtime dictator of Taiwan, mm -hmm. and when he died, China uh, chi of, Get of, it right. of real China, Get it right. of real China, and when he died, uh, like one, once they actually became a democracy, people were like. Okay, he wasn't Mao, but he was a brutal dictator that like tortured a lot of people. Can we get rid of our statue? And so what they came up with uh, was like, yeah, you can you can do it. Just um, this city will take them. So everybody just started schlepping their statues to this one town. And I went and visited it. And there's hundreds of Chiang Kai-shek statues who looks weirdly like Patrick Stewart. So it kind of looks like a Captain Picard statuary garden, but there's hundreds of them. They keep them all in one garden or is it all over the town? 
All in one garden. It's okay. near where his, his tomb is. His tomb is above ground because he's only temporarily there until they relocate him to his proper burial in mainland in, China. Because he's the because he's the, the proper leader, leader of, of China. China yeah. But they but they have all these statues. Anyway, the point is, wouldn't it be cool if we had a Jar Jar Binks statuary garden? Yeah. Like if we get all of the ones that are floating around and we put them in one location, that'd be cool. I, th- I think the statue garden has to guard the murder pit. I mean, that's mm. the only proper yeah. place. Yeah. So we need to buy every Jar Jar statue. <laughs> I wonder how many there are. I'm guessing like 200 max. I can't think there's that many. I you just gave maybe, me a, maybe you, 20. You just gave me a quest that's going to take me to the <laughs> end of my days. <laughs> you're, you're you're 85. No, I mean, you're 97 years old, and you're crossing the threshold of some dusty place, and you you mop on on something, and you go ah, jar jar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. The last one. Good Lord. All right, John, the next headline. French pole vaulter's blank cost him an Olympic medal. His sister, crotch, back injury, or coach? I'll let you go first on this one because I know the answer. I had a feeling you might. Hmm. His sister, crotch, but not at the same time. Not nope. at the same time. Either or. Coach, back. Back injury. Back injury. I think it's going to be coach. Here's my logic. I don't think he'd throw his back out. He's an Olympic athlete. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think that if if it uh, if it did happen, they wouldn't phrase it that way because it like cost him his cost him the Olympics. That makes it sound like somebody fucked up, right? Yeah. And like you got a back injury, you didn't fuck up. So I'm throwing the back one out right here. The sister, I don't think so because like she, I don't know, she shouts something. They've probably got like air horns or like those like spray cans you give to cats if they're misbehaving. Yeah, they probably yeah. do that with her. So I'm thinking it's the coach that, like, the coach, like, came out and was like, ref, you're blind, and, like, tried to pick a fight with him or something. Mm. Got, well, got, what was the other got one? disqualified. And he's yeah. French, you say? French. Mm. Yeah, okay, here again. I, I know what you're thinking, but the answer is no. They're already, like... They've Uncircumcised? Come, they've come to terms with their crotch. <laughs> like, they're already doing nude beaches and shit over there. So, like, they don't need to get their jollies out when they're at the Olympics. They're already naked half the time. So I don't think it's crotch either. I think it's coach. All right, Heaton, your answer is coach. Uh, Justin, go ahead and tell us. Did the you say answer. what the event was? Pole vaulting. So you know the concept of pole vaulting. This right? is where you you uh, you've got the pole and you, you got you got the stick. Yeah, and you like you you it's it's like backwards limbo. limbo. Yeah. yeah. So you have to get over yeah. without touching the the stick. So it oh, falls is down. it crotch? Shit! It was his big old dick. Really? <laughs> yep. So, went viral, went viral. Uh, 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 his hog caught on it while he was up there, and that's that's the difference. If man. he were a more modest, if God were more modest, he'd be an Olympian, an Olympic champion. You know, but instead, I, he was he was uh, gifted with a hose that that denied him Olympic glory. That is why I didn't go into pole vaulting. I was afraid. Uh, <laughs> that's your, my, yeah, no, I'm a pretty solid medium. I think your, I would, I would, I would, I would have been fine. Prodigious fucking yeah. lasso no, no, no. Of again, a dick. I, again, I'm a medium. I, I, I accept that. I'm fine with being a medium. Uh, great for that guy. Like I'm going to say, the old, the only thing that is potentially as good as a gold medal and is certainly better than a silver medal is getting is losing because of your cock. Because your big old dick. Like I would be if, if they're like Heaton, you're not going to get the gold medal. But you can become internationally famous for having a giant penis. All I think right. I would take that Here's, over a silver. Here it is. Heaton's going to see it for the first time. This is uh, the unfortunate big dick Olympian. Yep. Uh, this will not be shown on stream as apparently it is being copyright stricken to hell. So, uh, Heaton, enjoy. Okay. All right. He's jumping very gall. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just get it one more time. Yeah. Uh, 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 Anthony Amoridi, we apologize for laughing at your pain, but uh, raboom. I'm, I'm not going to, but like, this man is going to be fucked into a nub over the next four years of his life. He's fucking fine. I don't feel the slightest bit bad for this guy. The, oh, you get to go home to France, a hero, and also like your he's country's already in France. premier coxman? You didn't even have to carpool? Fuck you. No, I have no sympathy. The bad news is you don't get a medal. The good news is you can uh, crack your dick like Indiana Jones's whip. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, you're you're going to be in hot bunk for the rest of your life, friend. Oh, good Lord. All right. You know, they apparently, have you heard that the Olympic Village is apparently a, a big no-holds-barred fuck fest? I've heard that. So, I've heard that. that but apparently sense. they don't like it, and they have cardboard bed frames to discourage the athletes 
from fucking each other into highly athletic aerobic oblivion. Why do they care? I don't know. Because, like, okay, I can kind of see where, like, I don't know, maybe you're the coach and you're like, you got to keep your man juice. Because if, yeah. if you're too relaxed, you'll... But I assume that it's after. It's for all the athletes that are done Let them... afterward, right? I'm, I'm pretty pro-fucking in general. I don't like... like that's, It seems like a, like a nice side perk for the athletes. They're working really hard. Their bodies are in godlike form. Like, you know, r- rub them together till stuff comes out. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Although imagine the like the the non super athletic like the archers, <laughs> <laughs> the archers and the curlers are like, D- do you want to do hand stuff? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that I think it, I think it flows over to them too. I think that I mean because like if there's one thing that we know that these people, they're not exactly going to get tired. They're fucking yeah. Olympians. <laughs> if you okay, if you can't get they can laid, keep going until it gets sore. As, as a athletic athlete. And a foreigner when visiting another country. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, that it seems mean spirit. Is, is it confirmed that that's why they gave him cardboard beds? There was a, a like, lot of. I'm just going to say real quick I think if I were an athletic athlete, I could figure out some position not involving a bed. Okay, so here, Claire in our chat is saying, because I heard this as the opposite, because initially this went viral because. The French who are hosting it in Paris. Notoriously anti-sex. Uh, they are very green. Oh, that I have heard. And they like like wouldn't allow air conditioning exactly. the first week. And so this was part of it was like, oh, we're going to not be wasteful uh, and buy regular bed flakes. Posturing or signaling. I can't remember the exact word. Okay. Uh, but the I don't know. Then I said that, and then somebody was like, no, it was because of anti-fucking. And for whatever reason, they are anti-fucking, which you think that would be very much in their milieu, isn't like French? The French love fucking. Yeah, they're yeah, they're big on it. Yeah, they're not. They're, this isn't in Tehran. They're like like I, one of my friends, he um, he he went to uh, uh, he he did a study abroad in France. Like he did one of those exchanges as like a high school student or like, I think a middle school student, where his family sent him over there for six months. And so he's out on the playground and like meeting his first French f- friends. He's like ten, and one of them's like, you know, I'm Pierre. This is my girlfriend Jeanette. That is my mistress, Suzanne. Like, like mm-hmm. that was like that was like as a ten year old. Like there was a concept of mistress and girlfriend, very like like just normal. Now I I think it's probably the green thing that makes sense to me that it had yeah. to be like recycling or or something like that. Maybe even hygiene, not in the sense of fucking, but in the sense of like uh, bed bugs or something. Although one would think the the Olympic athletes would not be trailing bed bugs. The U.S. has just opted out of fucking all of it. They're like like yeah, well we'll get into hotels. We're the U.S. We're rich. Yeah, I. Um, Although apparently it fucked up two of our track athletes, two of our best track athletes. Uh, one of them got disqualified because they weren't coming from the Olympic Village, and they made them clear some other security thing, and the other wasn't up to snuff because she couldn't warm up for the same uh, uh, time that she normally would because they punished her and and the other runner for for staying in a hotel i want to be very clear on this this is because france did not want to have air conditioning yes fuck them we should go to war with them let's go fuck them if you're going to deprive us of air conditioning at the olympics you are not an ally of the united states yeah it was shikari richardson uh who missed the tokyo games because she tested positive for weed it's like why is that illegal is weed considered a performance-enhancing performance drug? drug? Yeah. What performance is it enhancing? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. But Shikari Richardson's got. I mean, that was a Bobo Olympics because it was like during COVID and all that. But like uh, uh, this time, I think she meddled in something. But then it was another event that she. Uh, well, good for her because that would really suck if she got disqualified twice. I'd feel bad for her, particularly if it was fucking air conditioning and weed. I know. Ugh. <sighs> Well, the good news is she'll be able to compete in the Olympics forever. Certainly isn't a window on those yeah. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, gentlemen, next headline. Florida International University signs deal to have their football stadium named after blank. Snoop Dogg, Ariana Grande, Pitbull, and Cher. The, read the headline for me again. Florida International University signs deal to have their football stadium named after Snoop Dogg, Ariana Grande, Pitbull, and Cher. Florida International University? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I have follow-up questions on that. I'm going to go with Cher, because I'm guessing Cher's like a big donor. 
because the like <laughs> Cher's still alive, right? But she's like in her she like is. she's she's kind of like elder statesman of musical world. She's kind of whatever her version is of like Dolly Parton, that level of her career. And Disco so, Dolly. So lots lots of money there. Uh, I feel like the other ones are just too young to have a stadium. Maybe Snoop Dogg. Hmm. Apparently, Snoop Dogg's getting five hundred thousand dollars a day to just be America's Olympic mascot for NBC. That's awesome. That's awesome. What what a what a charming charming story arc for Snoop Dogg that I for one did not see coming. That he would become America's like beloved cool uncle. He was there was a thing that went viral of him at the dressage event, which I didn't know that dressage you didn't bring your own horse. No, that's what makes it challenging. You have a, you have a random horse. And you just get on it and convince it to dance. This is the hardest sport in the world is you have to get on an animal and then convince it to dance for you. Wallace is right next to me. If like a toddler jumped on Wallace and tried yeah. to get him to dance, he wouldn't be able to pull Would it off. Would not do it. Yeah. Uh, That's why they punch the horses sometimes, which you shouldn't do, but you can kind of understand now. To which a friend of mine sent me that picture and I just responded, murder was the case that they gave him, but dressage was the passion he chose. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Nathan, look, look, you're new at these games, so you, you do have to understand that it is unfair to give a question about South Florida that involves the person that this involves. No, Florida International University, which is one of, uh, uh Miami's, uh, colleges will be... Uh, uh, have their stadium named, I guess, if it passes the Board of Regents by Mr. 305 himself, now Mr. Worldwide Pitbull. That is correct. Damn, Dollar. I thought you missed that headline. And did he donate a lot of money, or is he a famous alumnus? I think he, well, so here's here's the reality of it. There's actually an economics thing. There actually might be a, a fun uh, Ooh, political go orphanage. on. So advertising in general is falling apart. Uh, people do not want to pay for advertising. They don't find it to be particularly uh, uh, efficacious. And so the highest ticket advertising is stadium rights because it's a shit ton of money. You are usually buying it for like very nebulous return on interest. It's like, you know, you're, you're mostly buying it. So you also get a lot of signage inside the stadium. And so it's like, okay, well, if I fold all that into it, but mostly you buy it so you can have a connection with, a fan base or a city or something like that. You are showing commitment, which is usually the, the ones that stay around the longest are uh, companies that have deep roots in that city for one reason or another. But since nobody wants to pay for anything anymore, now you've seen stadium rights have not only plummeted from where they were at the highest, except for like the most valuable, but also it's going to shadier and shadier things, which is why like a lot of crypto yeah, companies, say, like the Bitcoin scam thing, SMB or whatever it was, uh, FTX, FTX, yeah, staying in Miami, FTX named the Miami Heat's stadium, not but uh, uh, thirty minutes from the FIU stadium. Uh, then they had to change the name because FTX went under and could not pay their bills anymore. So, with all that. College football is still very popular and it still matters, but nobody wants to pay the money for this. And so you've had just interesting fuck around money situation where now Pitbull is like, hey, I don't know. I'm sure he can work out a deal with his record company or somebody else to be like, uh, hey, $1.2 million a year. I'll cut a check to the university and it's just named Pitbull Field. And uh, 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 the, the rumor today was that part of the agreement would be he would write a new fight song for FIU. Cool. But that is a very Miami thing to do. A very, very I Miami I like this. Wait, do. hold on. Yeah. So do they already have a uh, – do they already have a – uh, a mascot for this group, the Golden Panthers, I believe. The Golden Panther. Could they like? Would they switch it to the Pitbull? Because that'd be kind no, of no, like, no. Think... Or you could have a, a Pitbull high fiving a, a Golden Panther. Yeah, there's a lot of art you could do. Or with maybe this. just a bald, uh, uh, yeah. a bald Panther yeah. with it with a chain. Nice, wearing uh, a wearing a suit jacket. Wait, okay. So Florida International University is this like like a Latin American university for all of Latin America no. located in no. Miami? It's mostly where like. The kids that are too poor to go to the University of Miami, which is a private school, so it's very, very expensive. Uh, you, everybody who's actually from Miami goes to FIU. What, what, why is it called international, though? 
Like, is it a state school? Fuck if I know. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, it might be a state school. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's a state school. It's more affordable. I do know it's more okay. affordable than the University of Miami. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of weird uh, uh, university names Wait, in Florida. How I wonder what the going rate is for like small, like Northeastern Oklahoma State University. Like I would have to look into this. If like I've thought about getting a billboard for the political orphanage just in Alva, Oklahoma, where my cousins live. Just because I think it'd be cool if I was able to get like a big like yeah a quarter of Alva listens to me that'd be like a neat thing so like maybe I'll look into this go gold bugs I want so so we did the um, the uh, Diamond Club book hoax thing right do you do you, do you ever do you know that Jeez. No. wow this I, I I realize there's two people that have not heard this story no I know this story you know the story anyway we did a, uh, a, a crowdsourced erotic fiction book. It sold a ton. It was number three on like the iBooks charts for uh, a couple days, but we wound up making like more money than we thought. And I got, I think it was around like ten thousand dollars. It was like it was like not bad money. Uh, and so for whatever reason, I felt very bad about it, uh, about taking it, and so. I was like, I'm going to give it away because this was just money that fell out of the sky. And I was like, I know what I want to do. I want to become a high school booster for the poorest high school in America. So I did a little research. Huh. I found out that the, what is considered to be the poorest high school in America is a reservation uh, uh, high school somewhere in like the Dakotas. Uh, could not give them money to save my life. Wouldn't answer the phone, wouldn't answer emails. Just, I was like, hey, I have money. I want to give, I, I literally just want to give you guys a bunch of money. What I want in, in response is like, maybe my name on jerseys if they do that. Otherwise, I just want a bunch of merch. Just send me a bunch of merch for whatever it was. Could not find anybody to give them money. Wow. Okay. Now, to be fair, I looked for about a week. And then I gave up because I'm like, hey, you want to, this is the universe telling me just take the money. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Although that would have been cool. I applaud. I, I applaud that whole endeavor. Uh, uh, unsafe DB level says, it seems like the kind of thing where you just mail a check and see if it gets cashed. No. <laughs> then I don't get the merch. Yeah. I want the merch. I want to be known. I want to, I want to call a reporter in that state and say, I have now become the biggest booster of of this school i want to be i want to get a little credit i'm not just trying to throw money into the wind i really like that idea i think that's a really neat idea i'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna look into that yeah all right the point totals right now is one heaton to justin for our final round worth four points total oh man great night host justin robert young and guest andrew heaton bid a collective uh total on a 1928 model a coffin car priced at blank your options are 7500 1000 500 and 2500 dollars. Oh, this is him trying to have us remember mm. what we bid in a game. Wait, is, no, 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 no. Is, is this what the actual price. price was or how much we bid? Oh. The actual price. Can you give us the numbers again? Yes. 7500 1000 500 and 2500. I think it was 7500. This was last week? This was, I think, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, oh, this was last week. Was Whoops. it last week? I think so. Yeah, uh, Scooper uh, claims Time it was last week. keep on slipping, slipping. No, it was two weeks ago. It was a fortnight ago. By okay. the way, my dog loves that giant pink peeps I won. Awesome. That's okay. like his favorite new toy. Every time I come home, he, like, he drags it, but he trips over it, so it's like <laughs> a fun game for him. He loves it. Nice, nice. All right, well, one more time, the options. $7,500, $1,500, and $2,500. How much did the coffin car cost? And Heaton, you said the most expensive? Mm-hmm. It's whatever the second most expensive. Second most expensive is $2,500 bringing. Yep. Hmm? yep, go. Bringing. Justin, you are tonight's lucky winner. Hey! Uh... I think you deserve the Kennedy merch. I, th I think you want to have it. Wow, why would I care about that? 
Why would I care about a little piece of early 1960s history? Can I can I see your toy since you're going home with it? Of course, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I see that. Jackie's the uh, queen of hearts. Uh, wait, are the other queens ladies he fucked too, or is it just Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them's Ava Gardner. And... <laughs> wait, is Marilyn Monroe? It would be amazing if Marilyn Monroe was no, one. No, I think these are all of his sisters and his mom. Who, I don't, he probably didn't fuck him, but maybe. You never know. Chat, if you I don't know, join I don't know making... if it was one of the sisters that they uh, lobotomized, though. Is this Shriver? It might be. Sergeant Shriver? Chad, if you want to help me make these games or join this amazing community, head on over to bit.ly slash NA Discord. Mm. LBJ. Yep. There we go. Nice. Hey, hey, LBJ, how many cards were you on today? All right, I like it. That that is a cool artifact. Cool artifact. Uh, Heaton, what do you have going on? What do I got going on? Um, you can always find me on the political orphanage. I got that going on. Uh, but uh, for everybody that that is already aware of that, I also occasionally do a show called Losers, Pretenders, and Scoundrels, which is a mm -hmm. funny history podcast. And uh, I think people from this audience in particular would like it. If you like the funny banter, imagine the funny banter you've heard today. With a lot of asides, except that we talk about like dead dictators and shit. Yeah. yeah. It's a great show. Losers, pretenders, and scoundrels. Great show. Go get that. Also, if you like Andrew Heaton, also, if you like me, also, if you like Jen Briney, then uh, what you need to do if you live in uh, uh, Chicago, the Windy City, the city with big shoulders, Meat Packer City, city with too many nicknames. Uh, then you can come see us on August 18th at, uh, I believe it is the Greenview Theater that is going to be at 7.30. Tickets will be available as soon as I get a link. Uh, it will go out on the We're Not Wrong Patreon because it's for We're Not Wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, We're Not Wrong is going to be doing our... Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No problem. Is going no, to be no, doing our. No. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Our, you our go, Democratic Wallace. National Committee, uh, uh, our convention show, August 18th. Tickets on sale very soon. Very, very soon. And here's the crazy thing there's a special guest, somebody who's never appeared on the show before. So it's not Brian. Because mm. Brian's been on the show. He True, was on has been our. On the show. He, did, uh, he did our first live show. He was on our first live show in SF. It's also so, not Wallace, just so everybody knows. Wallace would. Much as I love Wallace, he would not be conducive to the conversation. Uh, but there is a special guest, and it's going to be really good. But uh, go ahead and follow our socials, and I will uh, let you guys know when the tickets are available as soon as send in the deposit. He's waiting for that oh, old it's link. Been a great night. Anyway, a great uh, night. Uh, that about wraps it up for us. Wallace is on the move. Heaton, thank you so much for joining us. This was fun. Thanks for having me. I know. Just an absolute uh, uh, delight. Hey, uh, uh, Nate, thank you so much. No problem. For Brian Brushwood, I'm Justin Robert Young, reminding you it's been a great night. Oh, it's been Shine a on, great you night. crazy diamonds. A great a -A 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 night. And I don't want to wait another week for another motherfucking great night. Just in my friend.